welcome to Cumbria. What does Cumbria mean to me? Well it means a number of things really. Mainly it's my playground for riding my motorbike. But it's also the peace, the tranquility, the mountains, the views such as the one behind me now, food, the friendly people. It offers so very, very much. And as we travel around Cumbria together, as I take you on this adventure, you're in for a fabulous time. So come on, let's go for a ride together. Chapter 1 This little adventure is going to be taking us down Borrowdale, past Buttermere and along Newlands Valley. They have a saying around here, you know, whatever goes on in Borrowdale, stays in Borrowdale. But the views you're going to see, well, they're going to knock your socks off. Isn't dirt water looking beautiful this morning? And then we come to Buttermere, one of my favourite places 
on planet Earth. Isn't she absolutely stunning? Just look at that, yeah, blighter. It gets better as we go up as well. Isn't that just stunning? Absolutely stunning. And when we get to the top of the bank and go over the edge, just you wait. Absolutely spectacular. Isn't that just jaw dropping? This is Newlands Valley. And we're heading from Buttermere through Newlands Valley back towards Keswick. to the north of Keswick and that's where we're heading towards but just look at that imagine living there with that backdrop that's just beautiful Now we move on to chapter two, where we're gonna see Britain's most beautiful lake, an iconic mountain, one of the most famous passes in Cumbria, and down what's called the struggle. You're in for a tremendous journey, so come on, let's go. And as we start to drop down, you can see the hills in front, which make Ullswater. Britain's most beautiful lake. And there she is glistening in the bottom. Seven miles long, three quarters of a mile wide at her widest point, and 150 feet deep at her deepest point. She's totally breathtaking. And as we come through this avenue of trees, as we get to the end of this, prepare to have your socks knocked off. Are you ready? Are you really ready? Will you just take a look at that? Isn't she breathtaking? 100% breathtaking.
We're now on the edge of Oldswater, Britain's most beautiful lake. She's seven miles long. At her widest point, she's three quarters of a mile wide. And at the deepest area, next to Howtown, she's 150 feet deep. You can even take a ride up and down Oldswater with Oldswater steamers, leaving from Glenridding or from Pateley Bridge. But as we ride round, you'll be able to understand why this is Britain's most beautiful lake. We now come into Glen Ridding. Just look at that mountain over there. But in 2015, December of 2015, Glenridden was decimated. It was Storm Desmond. And Storm Desmond came through Glenridden in a biblical fashion so fierce. The water was at the top of the cars here. And this hotel, just as we go over the stream on the left, the Glen Ridding Hotel, was nearly destroyed. And it's only just opened this year, 2019, following refurbishment. We're going to go up and have a look at the mountain Helvell, and at the other side of there, the main road between Keswick and Grasmere was also washed away. Well, Glen Ridding, the next village down is Patterdale, and in between the two is an entrance to I would say one of the most famous mountains in the country and I'm going to show you it until recently I thought it was the second highest mountain in England and I've recently discovered it's actually the third <laughs> oh, that dog was happy with me Morning. Are you impressed yet? You should be, because right in front is Hell Bellum. Isn't she looking beyond gorgeous this morning? Third highest mountain in England. The other two are in Cumbria. Scarfell and Scafell. S-C-A. Gaffell. So Scarfell and Scafell. 950 metres. It's an old volcano. An old? <laughs> I guess it would be an old volcano. It's a dormant volcano. Now, do you see the scoopy out a bit? Well, that was the mouth of the volcano, and it's now got a little tarn in it, a little patch of water. And legend has it, there's a World War aeroplane that crashed there. This really is Britain at her finest. Oh, 
autumn is most certainly on her way. The trees, leaves are starting to change. As soon as we come to the bottom of Helvellyn, you're greeted by more stunning backdrops. And we're now in Patterdale. And then she opens up again as we get towards the bottom of Kirkston Pass round every corner your eyeballs are taken hostage by stunning views now there's a story coming up a little bit of a sad story but it also has a question for you Before we go up Kirkston Pass, which is over there, which is the highest drivable pass in Cumbria, and there's some more that we're going to be going over, but this is the highest one. Just to the right here, there's a stretch of water. It's called Brothers Water. A more peaceful patch of water you'd find difficult to discover in Cumbria. But it has a tragic story. The question is, what was it called before it was called Brothers Water? Because in the 19th century its name was changed because two brothers drowned here and in memory of them the name was changed to Brothers Water so you've got a little bit of research to do it will also tell you more about the story and you'll find something out of what this patch of water was called before that terrible tragedy And as we travel up, this is one of the areas of the country that is mentioned quite a lot through the winter time on the weather forecast. Being the highest drivable pass in Cumbria, when it snows, this is one of the first roads to get blocked and heard many times, and Kirkston Pass is blocked. Well, what is even more interesting is when we get to the top you've got Kirkston Pass in the Kirkston Pass in and as soon as we get past it we're going to turn right an old coaching inn and we're going to go down the struggle. Well, just up there on the top, that's Kirkston Quarry. That used to extract the stone to make slate and stone products. 
eventually closed down in 2012 with the loss of 39 highly skilled workmen. They couldn't compete with the products coming in from India and China and other areas of Europe. Another one of the industries that Britain has lost. The only real working slate mine or quarry within Cumbria now is Honister Slate Mine. And if memory serves me correctly, it is the only slate mine. The rest are quarries. Honister extracts the, the rock and the slate from inside the mountain. Whereas Kirkston Quarry took it from the side of the mountain. And believe it or not, slates on the top of Buckingham Palace are from Honest to Slate Mine. As we come down the struggle, probably the most famous stretch of water in Cumbria is Windermere. And there she is, right on the bottom. There we are now looking over Ambleside, the spire on the church and the Langdales in the distance. That's our next chapter. Now we come on to chapter three. And if you think the mountain behind me is impressive, you're in for a great big surprise as we go down the Langdales and then over the two most famous passes in Cumbria. Rhinos and Hardknot, and at the end of which we're going to visit a Roman fort. Then we're going to come back so that you get a different perspective as we head back towards the Langdales. You are in for an unbelievable surprise. Isn't that just off the scale? Absolutely off the scale. We're now heading to the Langdales and it just keeps getting better and better. Are you absolutely sure that you're ready? Sit yourself down And just look at that. Now I travel all over Cumbria because, well, it belongs to me. And I can't think of anywhere that is more spectacular than that. That has absolutely everything. And we haven't finished yet. What a day for a daydream. a day for an absolute beautiful daydream.
Welcome to history. We're going over that. We're now at the beginning of Rhino's Pass at Fellfoot Farm. Welcome to Chapter 3. Prepare to have your socks well and truly knocked off. That's where we've just come from. And that's where we're heading. 25% incline, or in the old money, a one in four. It doesn't get much better than today, it really doesn't. But I must say, even if it was chucking it down, it's still beautiful. Now, I wouldn't worry too much about what the view is behind me because it is pretty spectacular, let me tell you. And the reason for that is we're going over Rhinos and then Hard Knot Pass and then we're coming back the other way. And the reason for that is the views this way are totally different to the views coming back the other way. So you're in for a treat. Now we're at the top of Rhinos Pass. The spelling of it is W-R-Y-N-O-S-E. And if you go onto Wikipedia, you can find out an awful lot about it. But as we drop down the other side, we're going into a stunning valley. Look at that. The other end of the valley is Hard Knot, and that's what we're going up and down the other side as well. But isn't this just jaw dropping as well? Now, what we're coming up to now is one of the most challenging rides in the country. Hopefully, we won't meet any vehicles coming down. But Rhinos being a one in four, this is a one in three. Let the adventure begin. bit of going up, hard not pass over and done with, and then it's time to go down, and this is the Eskdale Valley, right in the distance, that's the coast, and some days you can even see the Isle of Man, but not today. Now we're going over an old Roman road now. 
down in Ravenglass, which is right in the southwest of Cumbria, was a very important port for the Romans to come in with their ships and to bring their goods and wares and soldiers. And they went from Ravenglass up here, where there is hard not Roman fort, and the road went up to Broome, just outside of Penrith, which joined the road that came from York. But just look at that, will you? Must confess, you don't often see from the top of here, right the way across to the coast, as clear as this. Stunning. Now, halfway down, there is Hard Knock Roman Fort. And that's what we're going to pull into to have a look. Now the fort itself was built in 120 to 138 AD, 18 years to build this fort. And you've got to admit, it provides a tremendous view, doesn't it? I've often wondered why they would build a fort here. But right in front of us now, that's the commanding officer's house. And that's the view. No wonder he's this end of the fort. I mentioned earlier today that Helvellum was the third highest mountain in England. That Scarfell and Scaffell were higher. Well, that's them over there. Just in front of us now, that's the entrance over there, that's Porta Pretoria. And just outside the entrance, you've got the bathhouse. One end being hot, the other end being cold. But it's not as we would know the bathhouse, they had no soaps back then, so they would slather themselves in oil into the hot end, get a good sweat on, then scrape the oil off, and then go into the cold end for the pores to close up. We now know these as saunas. Now what we're going to do is go back over Hard Knock Pass, back over Rhinos and back into Langdale. And the views that you will see, it doesn't get much better. Having been to Hard Knock Fort, we're now going back over Hard Knock Pass and rhinos from west to east and you'll see the difference Look at that. You don't get that the other way, as you've seen. Isn't it just beautiful? The most stunning passes in Britain.
and also tracing the routes that Romans would have walked. Nearly 2,000 years ago. There really are some stunning rocky hills, aren't they? With blue sky and fluffy white clouds behind. God's gift to your eyeballs. And so we start to go back up Rhinos. And it's at the other side of this that the view will just take your eyes hostage. <laughs> It's fantastic! It only just starts here. It gets better. Oh, does it get better! And down we go. Are you ready? Look at that. Breathtaking. That's facing towards Ambleside straight in front. And right in the distance, the very, very far distance. Well, that's Secret Mountains which you will see in another film. The nicest part about just riding around here is you can take your time. You need to take your time, otherwise you wouldn't see half of this. We're going along there, there's a little road just at the bottom. We came along it earlier and we're disappearing back into the Langdales because the view when we reach the beginning of the Langdales as we come into this way, I think God made it just for this film. And that is the beginning of the view that we're going to be welcomed with when we get to the end of this little road. That is Cumbria in a nutshell. Gorgeous. You see, as you come this way, the shadows fall differently. The mountains take on a totally different appearance. Yes, they're the same height, but the decor changes. Simply, jaw-droppingly stunning. Are you ready for one of the finest, best and most stunning views in Britain? Are you sure? Because in a few seconds you're just about to see it. Allow me to take your breath away. Just look at that.